So something is eating my potatoes. I have the potato plants. I have no idea what is happening here. This is not going the way I'd planned this year. <laughs> Pretty much, uh, yeah, anything I've planned, it's not working out so far. Um, these are nightshade plants, and so I did not think that the deer would touch them, but they're literally just munching them down. Can you see that? I, I'm assuming it's the deer. They've really munched this one down. That's the one they started on first, and then they have just branched out to eat the tops so far off of every single one of the plants. Now, I had thought this had stopped um, Elaine is in charge of watering these morning and evening right now. And so I had not been out here. I came out to add more dirt to the boxed, these two boxed ones, and was like, what in the world? What is eating the potatoes? And uh, anyways, he and I had a little chat. He just failed to mention that... Um, everything, all of the plants are now being eaten on. So I have no idea what it is. If you guys, I'm assuming it's the deer. If you think it's something different, you know, give me your thoughts. I visited with my dad about this because, you know, nightshade plants will harm deer. And so either there's a really sick deer out there or one that may not even be alive any further, but I'm just shocked. I am really shocked by this. So I'm not sure if I should just dig these up and call it a day and get what I can out of them or if we should keep watering them. I am a bit at my, uh, I won't say my wits ends, but I'm just surprised about it. You know, I was hoping to succeed in these, these specifically these two potato boxes this year and see um, if there were varieties we had, I had planted are going to be, you know, the ones we want to keep on for the future. So I don't know. Give me your thoughts, guys. everyone well you've seen the potatoes if you have any thoughts on what in the world is causing that other than possible deer uh, or even if you think it's the deer let me know I'm like I said I'm just not sure what to think of this next year everything will be in deer fencing that we'll be putting around the garden area so that won't be an issue but this year I thought I'd be safe with potatoes and apparently I'm not so oh well better legs next year <laughs> Um, we're going to head into the house for the next part of this video, which is making instant meals. I find sometimes we just get super busy, and then if I don't have anything pre-cooked in the refrigerator, then I'm just throwing kind of some junk at my kids, which I'd rather feed them a healthy meal that's important to us. So I have a new book that I am playing around with, and I want to share it with you and show you how I'm creating instant meals that are shelf-stable that I can stick in my pantry, and when I need them, I can grab them out and make a meal and I don't have to feel like I'm not feeding my kids something that's uh, the best for them. All right, let's head inside. Hey everyone, we are back. We're getting ready to make these instant meals and the book that I am using, I'm gonna flash it up on the screen so you can see it, is the Instapot Meals in a Jar. And I'm super excited about that because I love using my Instapot and I can just have this pre-made, throw it in my Instapot, put the numbers on there that it states to do so, and walk away and know that I'll have a meal for my family in a really short period of time. So with Mary, can you say hi? Hi. She wanted to help me with this this morning, and so we're going to get started. And the first meal we are going to do, we've got all of our ingredients set up, and so I am just going to start working with her and directing her to get it done. Mwah. Okay, we're going to do... Cream corn chowder. I've made this one before. I had a friend whose kitchen uh, went out and all she really had to cook with was like her barbecue and her Instapot. And so I made her some Instapot meals and took them to her and she just loved this one. So we're going to use a half a cup of instant mashed potatoes. OK, 
Okay, and then I'm going to show you. It's a half a cup. And you pour that in there. Okay. Maybe you could scoot your stool down so we can both fit. Thank you. Okay, there you go. I should have some doing this. That would be better. Yeah. I agree. Okay. All right. This is one of the reasons I really love to dehydrate food. So all of these meals are shelf stable because I'm using either my dehydrated foods or some of the bulk dried foods that I purchase like beans and lentils, things like that. So this is one of those areas that it's wonderful to use it in. So here's my dry onions that I did last year. This is, so it means a fourth cup of dry onions. So that's the half cup. They must be in the dirty dishes. We'll use this one. There's all my stuff in my cabinet. Okay, so we need a fourth cup of onions in each one. Put it in that one. We'll just go back. That way we don't lose track. It smells very nice. It does smell good, doesn't it? Onions. We love onions. Yeah, I like white onions, but not. I don't like. Well. The ones, that, the kind that are spicy, I don't really like, but when they're not spicy, I can eat them. But sometimes I can eat ice, white ones when they're spicy, because they're not super spicy. Well, not all white onions are spicy. Some yeah. of them are sweet onions, right? Yeah, like that's Like the right. Dahlia onions? That's, yeah, that's the ones that I eat. <laughs> all right, we've got our fourth cup of onions. We're going to use two tablespoons of carrots. So we got our dried carrots right here. Can you open that up? Give me a tablespoon. Mm -hmm, I gotta grab one. How do you open this stuff? Oh, so that is, sorry, it is uh, vacuum sealed. Mom vacuum seals them to keep them fresh. I'm gonna make sure. Oh, Mom, you're so strong. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> So it's two tablespoons of dried carrots. Can I do this one? I'm gonna get this down a little lower so it's just easier to scoop out and then you can, okay? okay. All right, two of these and each one of those. Can you do that please? All right. And then we need to do the celery the same way. Don't want me to help? Yeah, I can't scoop it. It's kind of in there pretty tight. There you go. So in the movie, I, we watched about oh, okay, about that movie about them tucking the body yesterday. Yeah, this is what it was. He went, oh, oh, you want, you want to um see a snake, a rattlesnake swallow a football? Swallow a football? Yeah, and he went, oh, the dad went, oh, you're gonna love it, and then he, they went away, and he went. That's silly. Like, oh, okay. Are you telling the people on the camera or are you talking to me? <laughs> you forgot. I knew you did. Yeah. You watched a fun movie yesterday. That's comical, Ruth Mary. All right, now we need two tablespoons of our celery in each one as well. Can I try a scoop it? You can try on this one. Oops, careful. Is this good? Yeah, put it in this one. All right. And it stinks. Two more. It smells like celery. Ooh. Uh, that's good, I think. Oh, you think that's enough? Yeah. You should call it good. Can I see, please? I'll just make the next one a little bit bigger. Huh. You don't like the smell of the dried celery? <laughs> Gosh, I don't think it smells so bad. Hmm. I will say. While we're making <laughs> cream chowder. <laughs> you're silly. So you're gonna help me finish with this one and then mom's gonna do the other ones, okay? 
How about that? Yeah. All right. Actually, you can watch me do the rest of this. It doesn't take too long. I want to do the salt. You do want to do the salt? Yeah. All right, do the salt. I'm going to try to skip this. All right. Just set it down, please. There you go. That good? That's good. Okay. There you go. All right. Thank you, Ruth Mary. Thank you for helping me. Yeah, I'm gonna. I want to still help. You still want to help? Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll finish this one, and then I'm actually gonna do the next one. So then we need a teaspoon of thyme. And I'm actually going to clean, no, I guess that's fine. I just don't want them mixed. And I, I'm going to do this one only because it's a little bit. Now that smells good. You like the smell of the thyme? Mm -hmm. All right, one more. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then two cups. Of dried corn kernels and I'm not positive I have enough for each one of these. I'm going to shake it up. There we go. So we'll just get to them then. Now I need two cups. Okay. This is a half a cup so that's only half a cup. So I actually need four of the half cups. Uh, Mom, why are you talking to your husband? Uh, what? What did you say? Are we not talking about the video? I was, I was talking to them. I'm talking to you and them. <laughs> All right. Yeah, that's funny. Okay. Well, I can, oh! Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh, today's bloopers, people. Things are not going as planned. <laughs> we'll be right back. Okay, we're back. We went ahead and decided to leave those little bit of bloopers in the video today because we thought you would maybe get as big a kick out of them as we did. And Ruth Mary understands that we're going to try and speed up this video a little bit because kind of the point is to show you that this doesn't take very long and we can get these done and have these instant meals. And Ruth Mary is going to help me. She helped me finish the corn chowder. Uh, so you guys didn't actually get to see the very end of that. And I'm going to, with each one of these, flash up the recipe and the picture from the book that, um, that we're working out of today. So, Ruth Mary, can you say goodbye and thank you to everyone? And you'll see them later on. Bye. See you in another video. See you in another video. All right. Okay. Take your stool for me and go on. Bye. Bye. Okay. All right. Sorry about that, guys. She's my great little helper, but to speed this up a little bit, we don't want a super long video. And to actually show you this doesn't take that long, which is kind of the point. So, chipotle black bean soup is the next one we're going to use. And that uses one tablespoon of ground chipotle, which I do not have. So I am just using chili powder. So that's the other thing. You do not need to um, reinvent the wheel. Just use what you have if you don't have what they... Are calling for use a spice that you think would be better or, or a spice that your family prefers and works best for you um, I'm hoping this actually won't be too spicy um, my husband really likes a lot of spice but my kids and I are not uh, don't like as much spice as he does I had to bring out the bigger thing of cumin we use a lot of that in our home so two teaspoons of cumin and I'm just going to whip these two up and show, or these uh, four, and show you that this just does not take too much time. And it is just worth, for us anyways, doing it. If I put another cumin in that one by accident, it doesn't matter, because our family loves it. I throw it in all kinds of things. And then some paprika. And we are actually just trying to make sure that we're getting, you know, whole foods in our body. 
we don't want to be feeding ourselves all these, you know, processed foods. That's been really important. And then there was definitely been times in our family that we've just kind of gone off the, the wagon on that and just started eating more of the typical American diet. And we always feel horrible when we do. So it's just really important that we, we eat as much of a whole foods diet as possible. Um, and then we really want to incorporate more of a live food. Um, I have definitely done that. My kids, you know, they do in the sense that we eat a lot of raw vegetables and salads and things like that. But I just want to make sure that we are, uh, you know, getting the best foods we possibly can. That's how our, the more live food you get in your body, uh, the better. I mean, your body needs live food. This is uh, ground garlic, a teaspoon of ground garlic. Like I said, I'm going to flash this recipe up to you here in just a minute. And then I need a third of a cup of onion. Where did I put up oh, there? Right now, I was like, where did I put an onion from earlier? Make sure we get all this in there. So, if you pre dehydrate your foods, or if that's not something you don't have a dehydrator, but you want to do something like this. You can buy pre-made dehydrated from uh, Mother Earth. She's a, it's a great company. Oh, well, they were coming in now. What's going on there? I actually have a link in the description below if that's something you're interested in. I have definitely bought some of their mixes, but as I've learned to dehydrate the things that work better for our family as we have gone, I am not purchasing as much from them, but they are a great company and I love their products. All right, two tablespoons. Now, this calls for dried green bell pepper, which I do not have. I have red bell pepper, so that's what I'm going to use. Like I said, don't worry if you don't have exactly what they're call is exactly what they're calling for. It's just improvising and cooking, which most of us I think know how to do. And if you don't, start now. I think that the lockdowns last year definitely helped helped people. Uh, figure out how to cook things that they haven't cooked in a long time. So, kind of opened opened the, the cook up in all of us, I hope, because it's a good thing. And then three cups of black beans for each one of these. So, we're going to have to cut back up. And six half cups. that all this would fit into the jar, but it does just right. It's really full. I want to show you that real quick. It's definitely really full, but we're just going to put a canning lid on here. We're going to air seal it or uh, vacuum seal it, and I'll show you how I'm going to do that. And then we put it on our shelf, and it's good to go. And I just am so excited to have these on my shelf. So I guess really in all honesty, counting this is unnecessary. So I'm gonna stop. Basically, I just gotta fill this bad boy to the top. All right. And then, oh, there we go, maybe a little bit more. I'm going to finish these guys. I'm going to shoot up a picture of uh, this recipe as well. Then we're going to work on the next ones. And I'll probably just show you the tail end of each of those, go over the recipe, shoot you the pictures. And honestly, though, as you can see as I'm going through this, if, if you have all your stuff out on the counter, it doesn't take that long. And it's a great way to put instant meals on your shelf. All right, so we finished up uh, making the Instapot instant meals, meals in a jar. I actually ended up just turning the camera off and making the rest of them with Ruth Mary because how do I, you teach if you don't do that? And I just, we just really felt like we needed to take that moment instead of doing a YouTube video and trying to make something picture perfect to just spend that time with her to do that. And you guys got to see, you know, kind of her silliness and she just has a sweetheart. She's a, just a sweet little girl. So uh, 
don't, not that she doesn't have her moments, as we all do, but yeah, she's a blessing. So I am going to go ahead and talk to you about each the other couple meals that we made off camera. And I'll also flash up a picture of the, um, the actual uh, uh, recipe in this book. And then you can pause it if you want and write that down. Also, if you are interested in this book, I will put it down in the description area underneath Closer to the bottom, I have an area that says books that we recommend, and I'm going to add this to the list because I'm really enjoying it. There are much more things in this book than what I'm showing you today. I'm really focusing on dinner kind of things, but there's also, uh, you can put a big thing where you make a big thing of chai latte and um, desserts and things like that, uh, breakfast, but I was more interested in just setting up some meals uh, dinner time because that's usually the area that I struggle in the most. So... You saw us make the black bean soup. I think that's the first one we did, second one. Goodness, now I don't remember. Uh, oh, second one. So the black bean soup, and that's on page um, 86. And here is that uh, that recipe right here. And then you saw us make the creamy corn chowder, um, and that this one I have like I I think I mentioned just a little bit earlier in the. Video was highly recommended. Uh, it told me that it was great when I made it, um, got it ready and gave to a friend of mine. The two that you didn't see were curried lentil soup, uh, which I'm super excited about, and also uh, three bean vegan chili. So obviously these are all vegetarian. There's no meat in them. Um, and so, and I'm, I'm okay with that occasionally. I actually feel like we eat a little bit too much meat. And so once in a while having a meal that doesn't have any meat is fabulous. But if that's something you'd prefer not to do, I also, personally, I also keep on dehydrated hamburger on, on hand. So I could actually just throw that in there and call that good. Or, you know, if you have stew meat or something like that, that you want to brown up in your Instapot before throwing these things in there. You could do that as well. You can obviously change this. If you didn't have an Instapot, how, how would these work for you? You could put them in a crock pot with the same exact ingredients and cook it on low all day and walk away. So even if you just didn't want to think about, oh, you got up that morning, you forgot to take something out to thaw, you're going to be home at this time, these people are coming, whatever the case may be, you could just throw this in your crock pot in the morning or you can throw it in your Instapot later on in the day. If you have a larger family and one of these would not feed your family, well, then you can take more than one of these and throw it in the Instapot with the ingredients necessary or in your crock pot. If you have one of those really large roasting pans, I have one of those, which I absolutely love. If you haven't seen my video on slow roasting lard, or um, I will put that up in the iCards for you guys to check out. So anyways then we went ahead and sealed these with uh the break later seal that i use um, if you haven't seen that video i will throw that up here and you can check it out as well and then these are all used lids that i have used pressure canned or uh, uh, boil bath previously and i'm reusing them on here which you can use by sealing with the break later but that's why i'm also using a ring just to make sure that st seal stays good and then I just went ahead and put some tape on here with the recipe book, the page number, and what this is so that I can just go, okay, this is from that book because I have more, more than just one meal in a jar um, book. I'll show you some others later on down the road. This is the one I want to focus on today. So I can just grab this and go, okay, page 97. So on the vegan, um, vegan chili. And the reason that it's in, you know, you want to have that written down is because then you're like, okay, what else do I need to add to this? Six cups of vegetable broth or, or water. That's all you need for this one particularly. So that's what you need. You throw that on there and there you go. Good to go. And obviously if vegan is not a big deal for you and you have, you want chicken broth or beef broth or personally I have llama broth and, and uh, pork broth in my pantry as well. So whatever you want to uh, do to make these work for your family. I hope this has just turned some wheels today and helped you think about um, how you can make your life a little easier. That's what I'm working on. So I hope that having Ruth Mary in the video bit was fun for you guys. If it was and you enjoyed that and you saw our little antics there that were, you know, I didn't cut the bloopers out. I thought it'd just be fun to keep them in there. Let us know. Give us a thumbs up. Give us a comment. 
If you're enjoying our stuff, you know, if you would share it with others, we'd greatly appreciate it. We hope you are all having a great day. God bless, and we hope to see you in the next video.